Hello, my name is Rudy Salazar, calbit.com. We're going to go over the basics of the California Bit Inspection Program. So the CHP call just said they're going to be here in a couple of weeks or maybe in a couple days. Or maybe the DOT called you and they're going to come over. Well, if you do the California Bit Inspection Program, which why you're here is probably because you are doing the or you need to do the California Bit Inspection Program. And we're going to go over the complete basics. Now, I've written a little book here that helps... Uh, explain the California Bit Inspection Program in eight steps. We're gonna go over all these steps right now, really quick. I'm not gonna go into detail. I'm gonna make separate videos uh, to go into details on all these steps. I already uh, have some up, but we're updating them now. And um, in this, one of the most important uh, deals here is uh, this picture. This picture right here is worth the price of admission, if you will. This is what we're trying to do when an inspector or, or uh, you know, somebody from the CHP or somebody needs to come and inspect your bit inspection program. If you can do this, you got it made. That's the foundation. Now, before we get started, disclaimer, okay? I am not with the CHP. I am not with the DMV. I'm just a mechanic that happened to start a little website called cowbit.com that explains the bit inspection program. It's been around since 1987. I was 19 years old when uh, it came out. And I was tasked with a 90 day mechanical inspections, but over time dealing with fleets, you realize, boy, there's a lot to deal with in the California bit inspection program. So I put it all together. So it's simple to understand. I, I, I kind of always say I put it together so a fifth grader can understand it. Well, somebody told me a fifth grader, that's an honor student, but be it as it may, it's, it's simple. So don't get, don't make it over complicated. All right. So we're going to go over this really quick. Um, Oh, and again, it's your responsibility to know the law. I'm, I'm not an attorney. I'm not your attorney. Again, I don't work for the uh, CHP or the DMV. The, you need to know the law in the vehicle code book, which is in, uh, it's actually written right here. I don't, I don't commit any of that stuff to memory. I, uh, I reference my own book sometimes when I need to know stuff. But in 34500 is where it starts in the vehicle code book. It's also in the Code of Regulations and Federal DOT. It's also in DMV publications and CHP. Pub it's all over the place. I capsulized it, so this is it right here. Okay, so the way I do it, let me put my book up here so nobody forgets I wrote a book. And, you know, just in case you want to buy it, you don't have to, though, again. And, oh, and two, all the things that we're going to discuss in here are in the back of my book. If you buy my book, you can put this in your copier and print these forms that we're going to be getting into. Also, uh, if you buy the ebook, you can just right click and print those things. Okay, so let me put my book aside here. Uh, okay, first step, and you'll notice in that picture I showed you at the beginning, inspector shows up. Let's say you make one of these out of a file folder and you write on it, uh, new driver hiring. Oh, you got your new driver hiring all together. And this can be old driver hiring. Let's say you never did driver folders. This is gonna be uh, your step number one and preparing for an inspection. So you got your new driver hiring. You're also going to have uh, driver records. We're going to discuss driver records in here. Will be like pull notices from the DMV, maybe drug testing information, which you don't keep open where everybody sees, obviously. But it'll be the drug testing uh, results or you know whatever they give you on drug testing will be in here. It could be uh, this is more like the catch-all for the driver file, if you will. You don't want to mix it up with anything in in this area here, which we'll be going over shortly. And then driver's hours of service. Now this can get real complicated or it could be really simple. It could just be as simple as time cards, a time sheet, log books. It could even be maybe combined with these two file systems. We're going to go over that in a second. Um, and then there's DVIRs, uh, driver vehicle, uh, uh, a daily vehicle inspection report. The OK status ones, which I put a thumbs up on. Um, you don't need to sort these. You just throw them in a box and you... Uh, 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 you know, have them ready for inspection. DVIR defects, daily vehicle inspection reports that have problems. Once a driver writes up a problem, it becomes a work order. You need to keep this for one year, keep them separated, sort them by vehicle. All right. And then the other one is the 90 day mechanical inspection. You sort these by vehicles. So you got your 90 day mechanical inspection and your systematic maintenance. You need to lube and change your oil at least once a year or sooner. Never put yourself in a box and say, we do it every so many miles. Well, then they'll start giving you tickets because you don't do them in so many miles. 
once a year or sooner, and hopefully you do it sooner. Lube your truck, or it depends on how your truck runs. Maybe your truck doesn't run that much, but you still got to at least uh, lube it and change your oil once a year. Again, just to remind you, and you can see this on my front page of my website, this is what we're trying to accomplish. When an inspector shows up, you're going to have all your, your, your stacks all put together here, including, notice this box down here at the bottom. What is that? That is this box, almost like a trash box, but it's your OK status DVIRs, which we'll talk about in a minute. This will clean up your operation so much because a lot of people just hold on to the ones they don't need to. After 90 days, throw them away. OK, these are OK status. Don't need to sort them either. It's by, uh, you can just, every time a driver uh, gives you an OK status DVIR, throw it in the box. After 90 days, throw it away. OK, so let's see here. Uh, Daily, uh, uh, um, we're going to do the new driver hiring. Again, you can uh, make your own folders. You could use the ones I got. I sell these in five packs, and let me show you what's inside of them. Let's say these are, well, let's not, I'm going to do this for five drivers. I got, I don't know, too many drivers here. Hold on a second. Here we go. Five drivers, okay? Here are five driver folders, right? Let's say you got driver number one, number two, number three, and all this. What's inside of each folder? What's inside of each folder is a driver employment application, a previous employment record review, a driver proficiency test, an alcohol and drug testing enrollment uh, uh, review sheet, and a primary uh, DMV uh, record review. Driver's name, the date the file complete, driver's name up here in the tab, and again, these are all in my ebook or my regular book. You could do them yourself, but whatever you do, and, and I'm going to go over these in detail in separate videos, but here's all these forms in here. They're very simple to fill out, not overcomplicated. Once you get this done by a driver, put a staple in it, seal it, glue it, whatever. Never open it again. Only time you open it, it says right here, driver hiring seal file only open during CHP bit inspection audit, and that's it. Do, and you know what, uh, a lot of the HR departments and, and things want to add to this or subtract or put more stuff in, just put what's on here. That's it. That's all the law wants. So when the inspection, when the inspector shows up, if he sees this with all your drivers, maybe you got one driver, 10 drivers, 100 drivers, 1,000 drivers, he sees that on here, he's going to be very impressed. So there's, there's our first uh, uh, stack. Again, we're doing like that picture in, in my uh, video. So then you have... Uh, Driver records. Now, what could be driver records? Uh, it could be a lot of different things. Let me get my files here. So I made up some file folders. I don't have it all printed out nice and neat here like this, but I got separate drivers. Now, noticing, notice separate file systems for the same driver. Driver one, two, three, four, five, right? And in here, what are you going to put? You're going to put, say, drug testing information or uh, um, Maybe not that, because that's sensitive stuff, but that's in a separate area, all divided up. But one of the main things you'll be putting in here is your uh, pool notice DMV uh, uh, reports. So what I have here, and I sell these online too, notice on my new driver hiring, that was the primary DMV record review. When the driver comes in for the first time, you fill out a sheet and it shows uh, his primary DMV record review. Well, this is when the pull notices come in. The, what the questions you need to ask yourself. Most important one, did you sign the report? Um, you fill this out, you, you sign it, and you attach it to the uh, pull notice you got for the driver. And you uh, take it off of this nice uh, pad here. And you put it in the driver folder. So, driver records um, could be that. There could be other things. This, I'll say, you can make it kind of a catch-all file for the driver, other things. But the main thing is you're keeping up with his pull notice programs, maybe some drug testing information that uh, just some, you know, light information, if you will. But the heavy stuff needs to be kept at HR, locked up. Um, you know, it could be other stuff. But basically, driver record reviews. Now, this could be commingled a little bit with driver's hours of service, which we'll go over. But here's a separate file system for drivers. Do not put it with the new driver hiring file system. That should be, again, sealed, stapled, never open it until inspection. So this file can grow and contract over time based on your drivers. So there's your driver records. And we're using pull notices for that. Uh, uh, review forms, which again, part of my ebook, part of my book. Make your own, whatever it is. 
Okay, then driver hours of service. Okay, driver's hours of service can get really complicated because your drivers could be do, using logbooks, electronic logging, uh, maybe no logbooks at all because they don't go over 100 air miles, they don't work over 12 hours a day or whatever the time limit is and all that, which I don't memorize. I got to look all that stuff up. But let me show you this here. Uh, okay, let's say you're doing logbooks, right? You got your logbooks all over the place, logbook pages, and they're... They're a nightmare like they are. Or you got electronic logs, computer readouts, all this stuff. It'd go here. Maybe you're using this sheet that's in my book that I made that your driver can just fill out because he's a local kind of driver. This is a short haul. So he's a short haul driver. He's back every day, but he's maybe uh, drives and then on a job site somewhere and then off the job site driving. He could just fill this out, turn this in. And you only need to keep these things for six, six months. Let me double check that again. I don't memorize things. I just write them and print them in, I guess. And uh, and in here I have a little little uh, sheet sheet tells us uh, um, how long to keep stuff. Here we go, right here. So hours of service, records plus supporting documents, we keep for six months. After six months, throw this stuff away, get rid of it. But again, we're gonna go into detail about all this stuff and how long to keep things and everything in other videos. I, I uh, 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 digress, as they say. Oh, also, okay, let's say you got a time cards, a bunch of time cards for the, for the driver, you know? So it may be time cards. It may be a short haul, simple form, like what's in my book. It may be complicated paper log book still. It could be the electronic, it could uh, electronic uh, 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 log book is going on. It could be um, uh, just a printout from your company's ADP system or computer or something like that. So now, what I do is again, just like I did here, driver logs, hours of service. Each driver, driver one through through five here in this example, would get all of their stuff put in for the six month period and doesn't need to be any more. You keep six months worth in each, of each driver and there's your driver's hours right there. Now, like I said, you might want to put this system together with this system. You might not. It might be overcomplicated. It might be super easy, but I just kind of separate them because you do have the pull notices coming in drug testing stuff coming in, this grows and contracts, this definitely grows and contracts. So, but again, new driver hiring, we never touch it, just stays alone. Okay, so we've got, uh, we're doing our little little gig here for, for uh, uh, our inspection that, again, we're pretending, hey, CHP call us, they're gonna be here uh, in two days. No stress, let's just put it together, you know, no, no, no issue. Um, Okay, then you have the, the DVIR reports. Now DVIR books, that's a whole nother animal. Your drivers are supposed to do a daily DVIR report. Well, you got some of these pages are, I, I have a thumbs up for okay status, thumbs down because maybe the brake lights out or the wheels are falling off and burning or something or there's big oil leaks. Those things have to be attended to. So some of these are okay. So every time they turn them in and, and you know, I tell you, probably over 90% of all the places I go into and the maintenance offices and dispatch offices, this is out of control. And it shouldn't be because anything that's okay status, thumbs up, right? Thumbs up. Anytime a driver says, hey, everything was okay, you know, he turns in his original report, just throw it in the box. Leave it alone. When the CHP even comes up, just show him the box. He can dig through them if he wants and, and sort them out. He won't sort them out because they're all okay. We all know. But... Let's say he writes up there's a defect or something wrong. Well, you don't do that. So again, I'm gonna go through this in other videos, more detail, but here is our box. We'll just put that over here. And these are okay status, we'll call it, right? Put it there. And, uh, but let's say we have defects are found. Well, the next day he turns in a report and you got this book going. Uh, you gotta keep the carbon in the book, the mechanic or whoever has to do the repair. Uh, has to go check off that it's been checked off could be a manager anybody putting in a light bulb uh, just other than the driver so let's say this one is a thumbs down and you had you had a problem well what you have to do with that is you have this is now a legal work order once a driver creates it it's a work order you have to keep it for one year with supporting documents and it has to be sorted by vehicle i mean it doesn't have to be but that's what i suggest you sort it so let me see here i'm going to get some uh let me see some real real file folder here. Here are some real file folders, right? Of some real trucks. Well, in this truck here, I would make separate vehicle files strictly for 
DVIRs with thumb down, driver vehicle inspection report. It had an issue. So you can put it in its own file with, it, with, it, with all its issues. This truck has had a lot of issues over, over for the one year period, if you will, but obviously there's more than that in here. And you would then keep separate file folders for each truck. Okay, so that's thumbs down, separate file folders for each truck. There's your DVIRs, thumbs down, thumbs up, get rid of them, throw them in a trash can. These you keep for one year in a separate file folder, uh, again, per truck. Okay, and then 90 day mechanical inspections. All right, here I sell these 90 day mechanical inspections in the pack. You could get them free offline off the, uh, from, the, from the CHP. Can't get mine free, mine cost uh, uh, per pack. You get them on my website, but they're really good. These are made by a mechanic for mechanics. Um, how they come is in these uh, packages here. Again, I'm gonna go into detail of these later in a separate video, but the 90 day forms, as you get them, the mechanic fills it out. Mine come in a two, two ply copy and strictly a 90 day mechanical inspection. Well, these uh, should be kept again, separate, just like the thumbs down DVIR. So we have a whole file system of just the vehicles and just their 90 day mechanical inspections. You're supposed to keep up to two years worth all the time. So you would have strictly only 90 day mechanical inspections in their file folder for the for their truck, for the, for each piece of equipment, trailer, truck, whatever it is that's that needs a 90 day mechanical, its own deal. So that's pretty simple. And you and and again, you got to keep these for two years, 90 days. So those are separate. And then last one is systematic maintenance. So systematic maintenance could be a whole nother set of files. Let me see if I could. Uh, uh, it could be a whole nother set of files of the same trucks. Now notice in this, in this whole setup I got, I got three files, all the same trucks. And systematic maintenance is like your tire repairs, oil changes, lube jobs, um, all, all the stuff that you, that, you know, repairs, it's your catch off for your, for your vehicles. I suggest you keep, you definitely keep to keep this separate from the DVIRs. Um, I mean the uh, 90 day mechanical inspections. The 90 day mechanical, mechanical inspections should totally have their own um, uh, file system. These two can be commingled because when you're doing your thumbs down DVIRs, you can put them over here. But if you really want to run your system really sharp and when the inspectors come in, you could show that each, each one has its own file for anything the driver reported, thumbs down, you fixed it, it's back on the road. So that could be that way. Or they could be put in here. Or they can also uh, be uh, what, what some of my customers do and, and as we set up, we put a divider folder in it in, in here and we put the, the, the 90 days in the back or in the front and you know basically keep them separate and put all the thumbs down DVIRs and the um, uh, uh, systematic maintenance on one side. So they are separate. So there's various ways you can do this depending on your operation, but definitely make sure your 90 days are separated, ready for inspection. Um, by, by an inspector and your systematic maintenance and your DVIRs, uh, um, I mean, uh, systematic maintenance and DVIRs, thumbs down, separated. So that was the basics of the California Bit Inspection Program. You do this, you're way ahead of the game. If you happen to be under DOT regulations and you have to do these stickers, which notice, DVIR, California DVIR does not require stickering a truck for anything. CHP doesn't care about stickers. The, D, the, the, the DOT, if you're under federal re regulations and if, and if you're just in California and that's all you are, you're not under it. But if you got a home office or anything happening outside of California, you, you know, in, in another state, then you are required to do a federal inspection. My sticker is the best sticker on the market. It's aluminum. You just use a regular pin to fill it out and it lasts up to eight years because you put a date next, next year, you just cross out that date, put the next date next year, cross out that date, put the next year, put the next date. So it's the best sticker on the market. It sticks. It's, it's really high quality. It could go through rain, snow, everything, and uh, lasts eight years. Now, since I'm on this subject, these stickers happen to be one of my best selling items. I, I just stumbled into this. I didn't realize they were going to be selling so much. I sell these across the United States, the forms, the 90 day inspection forms are, are my second big, you know, selling item. Both of these come in rugged packages and all that good stuff. Um, but, uh, 
One thing is this 90 day inspection form is also a federal annual inspection form. It's the same thing. So when you're doing four of these a year, one of them's a federal annual, you could just call it and stick your truck. But again, not everybody's under DOT. So I'm totally digressing there because this is a California bid inspection program I'm, expect, uh, I'm explaining and my website's about California bid, but we touch a little bit on DOT because a lot of comp companies are under DOT as well. So from my file systems to my stickers, to my 90 day inspection forms, this is how you do it. You can make all this up yourself. You can, you can uh, download my ebook in which you can print uh, these things yourself. Uh, you can buy the, buy the book and, uh, and have that too. And it has all the forms in the back. Um, and you know, you don't need to buy any of this stuff. You can do it all yourself. But the most important thing is when that inspector comes over, be a DOT or CHP, it's ready. And maybe you're not going to see an inspector, but you're always ready. So you do this, you're, you're, you're doing good. All right. So that is the California bit inspection, a little bit of DOT inspection uh, mixed in. And I uh, thank you for watching and look for my other videos where we're going to explain each one of these uh, systems in detail. Thank you.